is that um, I posted all the grades on ManageBack, um, so they're there. Um, there's a few little things that I need to tweak and adjust um, as some of you are keeps, you know, sending me new things. Um, but um, uh, from the locked assignments that you can't submit on Inmoto, you keep sending me over email and, and messages. So I'm still going to go over those. Um, and then we are going to, um, or not, basically the full grades are going to be uploaded on ManagePack um, as you kind of keep sending it in. But for the most part, they're all there. All the assignments in the past month that you did um, for March. So when I'm looking at this, um, at the grades spreadsheet that I made, there are a lot of holes. And granted, most of you who are here are the ones that are submitting things, but some of you who are here have just like lines of zeros on there, okay? I'm not going to tell your names on here, but you know who you are. And that's not gonna look good on your progress report, which will come out in two weeks. So yes, there's gonna be a progress report sent home on April 15th or after April 15th. April 15th is when I am going to submitting, be submitting grades. So it's gonna be everything from February, March, and first week of April, okay? Because, um, and then the second week of April, I'm just not going to count because, uh, meaning I won't, those grades are not gonna be on the progress reports because uh, I wanna give myself the time to grade everything. So if you are missing work from February, March, and then if you're gonna be missing work from April, uh, first week of April, it's not gonna look good on your progress report. It's going to say a lot of, I'm gonna say a lot of comments because that's the commenting one, that's the one that I have to leave comments for your parents, and it's not gonna be a nice, happy comment. So if you wanna avoid that, because your parents are going to read this, and you're gonna read this, I don't think anybody likes reading anything negative about them. Not that I'm gonna write bad things about you, but I'm gonna do tell you that you're gonna be missing a lot, and your grade is impacted because of this, and this is why I think your grade is like this, and this is what you need to do. And so this is going to be, um, if you want to avoid that, Ah, sorry, I'm killing a bug on my wall. You need to be, um, you need to, um, what's it called? Go through your manage back. Okay, before you ask me if you're missing anything, just a sec. Look through your manage back, okay? Make sure that which assignments you're missing. And then, as I shared with you the picture in Edmodo, you go to your right hand, hand side in Edmodo. You have your, what's coming up, and then you have your planner. Go through all of these assignments, okay, and ask yourself, did I submit it? Now, I make mistakes, I'm not a robot, okay? And when I'm looking at, you know, 40 different assignments, I'm about to make mistakes. So if I enter, like, the wrong grade, or if I put a zero where you know you've sent it to me, just send me a message and say, Ms. Mara, here is my assignment. Um, you marked it wrong. Just resend it to me, because that way it's easier for me to look at it, know that it's there, and then I can fix the grade. If you didn't submit it, you, I'm not marking things late. I know our schedule is whack right now. So as long as you submit everything to me by the first week of April, so you have that first week of April, your grade will be fine, okay? I'm not marking anything late. However, like I said, your grade will look grim if you don't. Um, you need, before, like I said, before you ask me, okay, thank you, Linda. Before you ask me, what um what you're missing as i said make sure you go through that okay and if you're confused then ask me i first of all not my responsibility to create lists for you of what you're missing that's yours especially when it's made so easy for you on Edmodo. um especially when you have all the online tools that you need to find that out if you are truly confused then ask me okay i can help you with that but do your part first um Second thing is um, there, for the most part, I'm getting really good quality work for most of you um, and really on time. And so I really, really appreciate it because it helps me grade these things and it helps me make sure and, and check all of that. So um, some of you don't need to step up your game a little bit um, and to submit things on time and do quality work, okay? This is just like you're in the classroom. I know it's not. I know that it's really hard when nobody's there to actually check your quality work and tell you to do better, but you need to step it up, okay? This is where your fight is really against yourself, not somebody else in class 
and that's I'm not your teacher, okay, even though I'm here as well, but really you're kind of there on your own. And so this is where the resilience will have to come in and you're going to have to be a little bit more reflective and ask yourself right now, what's not working for me? Why am I missing so much work? Is it because I am procrastinating? It's because I am getting distracted, okay? Um, so that's kind of the big thing here. Um, always um, attendance is being taken for these Zoom sessions. And if you notice, I sent you an email along with your parents that you will have that mandatory Zoom session on Thursday and then an optional Zoom session on Friday, all at 2.30, normal class time that we normally have our seventh period at. Um, we, for Friday optional one, I'm just going to open it up um, and it's going to be, the meeting is gonna be there. Um, if you wanna drop in and say hi, tell me a random joke, ask a question about assignment, that's what it's for, okay? So um, if you feel like that's, you don't need that to do your work, I'm not going to mark you late for that. So that's what optional means. All right, and if you just need any extra help or if you just feeling like you wanna to chat to your teacher, so that's what it is. Okay, now let's get to, or before I go to the assignment, are there any questions about grades, assignments, manage back, things like that? I know some of you asked if you're missing anything, but um, we'll, get to, we'll get to that. All right, let's go to assignment. Here is your assignment sheet for today and for this week, okay? So what you're working on is called an Africa Physical and Human Geography Visual Essay. Um, so hopefully you've started to notice the way that we do our class is we build, we do little tiny assignments that build, then build into um, a larger assignment. By the way, let me just rewind back to what I said earlier about assignments. If you notice, a lot of the way that we do assignments is is we do, like I said, little tiny ones and then a bigger project. Usually when you do those little tiny assignments, they're really there for completion. I give you five points or 10 points for completion, right? Um, so if you turn it in, you get full five points. If you don't turn it in, you get a zero. There's no in between, right? Because they're completion. When you do a larger project, like an essay or like say the characterization project, those are the points that are on merit, meaning did you do quality work? Did you fin follow through the assignment? Did you answer all the questions? All of these things, did you do it correctly? So that's the merit grade, okay? So if you start noticing the pattern. So if you are missing a lot of work, a lot of these things could be done together. Like for example, we've done physical geography. The assignments that went with physical geography was reading the physical geography news ELA uh, and then doing the map. Uh, on, or before it was the map and then the physical geography, right? And then we read the human geography article and we did claims with that and you wrote a paragraph combining the first assignment and the second assignment. Now that assignment that you did just before, the claims, the African human geography and the claims is what you will, will help you do this next project that we're doing. So if you haven't done the previous assignment, before you jump into this, make sure that you go back and you do the previous two assignments that we did with physical and human geography. Otherwise, this is not going to make sense. This will not, will not be easy for you to do. Most of the stuff that's how we do in our class. So that's why missing work does not work. Does that make sense? Okay, um, so here's what you're doing. The question that we're answering or the big kind of, let's say thesis is this question. And we already kind of started thinking about this, is how does Africa's physical geography impact its human geography? Now you can twist this up. I'm going to write this as well, is how does Africa's human geography impact, oh look, Ms. Mara spelled something wrong, impact its physical geography, okay? So it works both ways. Physical geography, impacts human geography with where we live. If we looked on the map and if we overlaid the population map on top of our physical geography map, what do you think you'll notice in terms of population? Any ideas or guesses? So let me repeat that question again. What do you think would happen if we take the population map, meaning where do people live in Africa, where are the biggest populations, and we overlaid it on top of the physical map that you guys made, um, what do you think you will notice about the population? 
where do people tend to collect more? Near. Near water, yes. Where else? Rivers, yep. Where else? Hi, Ms. Mara, I'm in. Good, I'm glad you made it. Thank you. You're very late. And that's not good, but I'm glad you're here. Okay, um, so what is a big one? Absolutely, good fertile land. So if you look at your maps and you look at the, the map of Africa, what's at the top of Africa? What kind of, uh, kind of land is it? What do you have? You guys, we're gonna get out your African maps and look at them. What's at the top of Africa? What kind of land is it or climate? Is it forests? Is it water? Yes, thank you, Tim. What is the Sahara? What kind of place is this? Desert. Very desert, very hot. Do you think people live there? No. no. I mean, people, yes, there's some, but not as much population as you would go into South Africa or the savannas. People tend to stay away from places that make it hard for them to survive. Okay, that's a pretty, pretty like, straightforward idea, but we want to look at how that idea comes out, right? So if we look at here, this question, how does physical geography impact human geography? One of the answers to that is people tend to live near water and near fertile land and not in the desert because it makes it hard to survive. Easy peasy. Now, if we look at the set different question, this question of how does Africa human geography impact its physical geography, we can also ask this question of what do humans do to manipulate the place where they live. A lot of the times, people do live in the desert, but they tend to live either, they make oasis happen or they water, meaning like they, um, they sorry, so I'm just trying to talk to me on Facebook, go away. Okay, um, they irrigate, meaning they take, uh, they build um, canals where they take water from the rivers and navigate it to a place where, where there was no water. We talked about this idea, okay? Those are some of the positive things. They could also plant trees for shade because the sun in Africa is directly above because it's near the equator. Well, not most of Africa, but the middle of Africa, right? So people do something to make their lives a little easier. They manipulate the geography of a place, the natural geography, to suit themselves so they can live a better life. Sometimes people bend the stick a little too far and what happens with that? What happens when people manipulate nature too much? They might die. What dies? Possibly. What, who dies or what dies? We talked about this when we talked about Africa and, and Oceania and uh, Asia. Big environmental impacts right when we when we manipulate nature too much like we build oil rigs in the ocean it destroys coral coral bleh, coral reefs in africa and oceania right different things are happening like that in africa so our job or your job is going to be to find that out if you choose to focus on this question you're going to ask yourself what are people doing that are both positive and negative impacts on physical geography so your choice is to pick one, one or two out of these questions. You don't need to do both, okay? I'm gonna change that for you to, to be a little bit more clear. And then what you're doing with that is your answer to this question will be your thesis, okay? That will be your thesis for the whole essay. So you're gonna say, people, let's say, I'm gonna do this one, and I'm gonna say, the answer to this question is, people manipulate physical geography in order to survive, but some, sometimes they damage physical geography as a result. That's my answer. That's going to be my thesis question or thesis for my visual essay. Okay, now what's a visual essay? It is kind of like an infographic, but it's with more words and it's organized like an essay rather than just an infographic. Okay, so how is this going to look like? Your intro, you'll have an intro, and I'm going to show you a quick picture. Okay. Uh, can everybody see? No, hold on. Let me share that. Okay, your essay is going to look something like this when it's done. Okay, your intro paragraph, 
one, two, three body paragraphs and your conclusion. The only thing that you will have to write is one paragraph. Now you've already written a paragraph for it if you've done the previous assignment. You could take that paragraph, plug it into your essay here, change it a little bit to fit into your thesis statement, and use that raw material as your as one of your um, paragraphs. Okay. I'm gonna go back to this in just a little bit. I'm gonna go back to our project sheet. So um, you will write a complete intro paragraph with your thesis being the last sentence, as always. So your intro is going to be no different than a normal essay intro, okay? Um, and then you're going to have um, three body paragraphs. One of these will be a complete paragraph, as I mentioned. The other two will have images with two details from the text. Now, you're going to ask, Ms. Mara, which text? Which two texts do you have that I gave you? Human geography, sorry, not four, two. Human geography and then physical geography. Those are the two texts. That's where your evidence is coming from. You don't need to go online. You don't need to go find any other information. You can if you want to, if you feel like you're up for it, but it's not required, okay? Um, and then conclusion is also a complete paragraph. Now, before you freak out, because you will have to write an essay for English, you're only right, this, this intro and conclusion is three to five sentences. Remember, your conclusions and your intros don't need to be long. Okay, so all in all, you're writing three paragraphs, and two paragraphs will be images with details. So what does that mean when I'm saying images with pictures? I'm going to share another thing with you here. Um, can everybody see this? One person sees it. Stephen, can you see it? Uh -huh. Boxes, or do you still see the organizer? Uh, I don't see it. Okay, okay, let me double check. Thank you. Uh, here it is, okay? So, uh, normally, if I was, if we were in class, I would hand this out to you. And I would hand out the, the other one that I just showed you. And you would cut this out and then place it into your big graphic organizer that's this, right? And then you could do it in whatever order you want, okay? So you, can, you choose whichever one, whichever body paragraph you want to write, and which two you want to just do the images. So um, we go back here. <laughs> Okay. First one is written. Okay, you just write it out. The other two are pictures and details. Now, this is in this one. I'm showing you that this is where you would put your picture, and then you would put detail one from the text and detail two. Okay, so you don't need to write these. You don't need to have. You just need to write the topic. So if I'm saying if my thesis statement is that humans have impacted geography by creating um, tools and creating ways for, for, to manipulate nature for them to survive, even though sometimes it harms the environment, that's my topic, then I'm gonna find three ways that people have done it. First one, by irrigating land, providing water, by digging canals from the river, planting trees, that's the second one for shade. Number three, um, let's say uh, it's the negative impact, okay? so. Two are positive, one is negative. Maybe it could be all positive, maybe it could be all negative. Okay, it's up to you how you decide that. But my topic here would be, let's say, planting trees, okay? This one would be irrigating, right? So your topic doesn't even have to be a complete sentence. It's just the topic of your paragraph. What are you talking about this paragraph? The only complete sentence and complete paragraph is that one that you choose to write, okay? Are you, give me a thumbs up if this so far you're along with me. Um, I'm a little along with you, but mostly I'm just not. Steven, I'm confused. You're along, you, you get what I'm saying, you joined a little later, but. Um, yeah. So you're answering a question of one or two questions on this sheet. One. Oh. By, yeah, I get it, I guess. Yep, Over. by creating a visual essay. So, Whoa. you may be asking, okay, how do I do this? Do I print this out? No, you can do this in Canva if you want to. You can do this in 
um, you can actually like print this out and write it in and then take a picture of it like you, some of you have been doing. This is an A3, by the way. So if you don't have A3 paper, it might, um, might be a little difficult. If you print it in A4, I will accept that as well. But with this one, it's, it's cool to do it online, like on Canva or some other place, because then you, could, you can create um, more kind of interactive images and, and make it an actual visual essay. So um, normally when we talk about visual essays, we talk about, um, uh, we talk about <coughs> that it's visually pleasing to look at. So when I look at it, I can see, oh, I know what this is about. Um, you should have a title at the top. Um, and your picture should be um, something that, that catches people's attention, right? So when we make visual essays in the real world, um, people usually do a lot of pictures. Um, so if you want to include two or three pictures for, for those image paragraphs, feel free to do that. Um, and that's why I'm saying that with online tools, it's easier to do that. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, add another one of these because I've only added one question here. How does Africa's physical geography impact its human geography? I'm going to add how does Africa's human geography impact its physical geography as well. And you just pick one to brainstorm. You all need to do this part to send it to me to make sure that's your job right now before we get, um, before you start doing the actual essay. Okay, so what are three ways? that physical geography impacts human geography. And then for the second question, what are three ways that human geography impacts physical geography, okay? Um, so this is kind of the brainstorming sheet that you're going to receive today. I'm not gonna send you any other materials yet. And you're gonna send it back to me for tomorrow. And then I'm gonna give you the other ones and then you could start doing your visual essay. Okay, does that make sense? Questions, concerns, confusions. Okay, all right. Um, if you'll need help on that, let me know. Um, and that's for, um, good, that's for today. Um, tomorrow I'm going to post your English stuff that we're gonna start working on. Um, and so on Tuesday Thursday meeting, our meeting will be about English. Um, and we'll talk more about English stuff. And then um, this visual essay will be due Friday. Your, um, your, sorry, City of Ember essay will be due on Monday, okay? So you'll have enough time to complete both, okay? Um, if you are good and you have understood what you need to do, um, you can go. If you have concerns or questions about your, um, Oh, by the way, if you need, uh, as I've said earlier, if you need some help or if you want to have an individual Zoom um, meeting after this, just let me know. We'll create a different co different ID and I'll send it to you personally. So just send me a message um, on Edmodo right now if that's what you want to do. If you want to have a uh, one to talk about your assignments or missing things that you've done. Um, again, before asking me if you're missing anything, make sure just go back and check and uh, manage back. Um, that should be all clear in terms of what you're missing or not. Um, go through your Edmodo planner, all of that jazz, okay? Um, I'm going to post the assignment right after this, and then I'm going to post also um, the, just the schedule so you know what's coming up this week, okay? If you're good, you may zoom out, say bye, and go have fun, okay? Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. Bye, Miss Mara. Amy, bye. Hoover's leaving. Yes.